My name is Keisha Gaskins. I am senior counsel with the Brennan Center for Justice. We are a nonpartisan public policy and legal advocacy organization. We focus on fundamental issues of democracy and justice. As part of our work within the democracy program, we promote policies to encourage free, fair, and accessible elections, to improve the security of elections, and to maximize citizen enfranchisement and participation in the election process. Our work towards these goals has included extensive research in the publication of studies, reports, public education, assistance to state and federal policymakers, and advice on electoral legislation, and when necessary, litigation to protect the fundamental right to vote. As part of this work, we paid particular attention to the debate over strict voter identification laws. We have commissioned research on the number of citizens who lack certain forms of documentary proof of identity and citizenship. We have per participated as either amicus or party representatives in litigation over strict ID laws in Indiana, Georgia, Arizona, South Carolina, Texas, and New Mexico. The Brennan Center believes that eligible voters should not be prevented from voting because of strict ID requirements. A strict ID requirement in North Carolina is unjustified for, <clears throat> for a number of reasons. First, reasonable interest, in, reasonable interest in improving ballot security are not furthered by strict photo ID requirements. Second, strict photo ID requirements create serious and unwarranted problems for voters that lack photo identification. And third, proper implementation of a strict no photo, no vote voter ID requirement is a costly and serious burden to taxpayers and in almost all other states passing these laws, results in protracted litigation. Like many states, North Carolina's election administrations are not problem free. However, North Carolina does have some of the best election administration in this country. We've seen over time that the existing processes and procedures in North Carolina have really resulted in increased turnout, and the existing systems do work very well. We did see, however, in last year's elections, uh, long lines for both early and election day voting. There were also concerns about uh, bloated voter registration rolls that presented problems for election administrators. And these are issues that should be addressed. In enacted any legislation related to elections, this body has a very heavy burden of determining what the problem is that needs to be solved and whether the proposed solution actually serves to remedy the problem. In this case, a strict photo ID requirement cannot address problems related to long lines, inaccurate voter registration list, voter malfeasance like double voting, felon voting, or vote buying. The only type of voter malfeasance that voter ID can address is one of voter impersonation. A photo ID requirement is a worst kind of electoral policy solution in the face of the challenges. It creates an illusion of security that does not exist while offering no real solution to any identified problem with electoral administration while simultaneously creating serious consequences for many legal and qualified voters. According to the North Carolina Board of Elections, more than 21 million votes have been cast in North Carolina over the past 12 years. During that time, only one case of voter impersonation occurred, and certainly that is one case too many. But fortunately, North Carolina's systems identified, um, identified the problem, referred the problem to appropriate law enforcement agencies, and took appropriate action. Voter fraud is rare, and cases of voter impersonation are even more uncommon. There is no evidence of coordinated and systemic voter fraud that threatens Americans' elections anywhere in this country, and certainly there is no evidence here in North Carolina. A strict voter ID law will not improve North Carolina's elections, but we do know that many of North Carolina's voters and eligible voters lack the kind of identification required by such a law. Brennan Center's research shows that one in 10 eligible voters lack the necessary government-issued voter ID required by many no-photo, no-vote laws. This includes 25% of African-American populations and 18% of our population of citizens over the age of 65. This research is supported by the January 13th findings of North Carolina State Board of Elections and finding over 600,000 registered voters who do not have a North Carolina photo ID. What is most telling about the Board of Elections data is what types of voters are, would be most impacted by these laws. It's important to note that 82% of the voters um, identified in that report were active voters. 24% were North Carolina citizens over the age of 25, and 33% of the registered voters were identified as African American, Asian, or American Indian. 
And according to the US Census, those same minority groups make up only 23% of the voting age population in North Carolina. For a person who lacks photo ID, obtaining new photo identification can be resource intensive. Certainly any photo ID law would require that North Carolina create some mechanism for the ID to be free to any and all voters who require one. The cost of the underlying documentation to obtain a secure ID is, is significant. And for the 16% of North Carolina citizens currently living in poverty, prohibitive. Voters will have to travel some distance to obtain an ID to get to an ID issuing office. For rural voters and the 6.5% of North Carolina's residents who reside in households without access to a vehicle, the inability to access IDs may render voting impossible. Assuring that voters are who they say they are is important and essential to conducting fair elections. There are, however, reasonable ways to confirm a voter's identity through documentation and mechanisms that are already available in North Carolina's election systems. Strict voter ID laws are controversial. And in almost every case where a, where a state has passed a strict no photo, no vote law, protracted litigation has followed. To date, four states have imposed strict voter ID laws on voters, Indiana, Georgia, Kansas, and Tennessee. With Georgia, Indiana, and Tennessee having to defend these laws in state and federal court. Al in addition, Alabama, Mississippi, Missouri, South Carolina, Pennsylvania, Texas, and Wisconsin have, st have passed strict voter ID laws that have been stayed, subject to delayed implementation, or declared illegal under the Voting Rights Act or under state constitutional law. Because specific legislation hasn't been introduced in North Carolina, this session is impossible to say what provisions may run afoul of state or federal law, but it is a mistake to presume that the Supreme Court's 2008 decision in Crawford v. Marion County means that any strict ID law would unnecessarily be constitutional. The acceptability of the burden on individual voters involves a fact-specific inquiry, including what exceptions to the ID requirement would be available, whether the requirements are for all voters. Any legal inquiry would include a consideration of how expansive the list of acceptable documents beyond photo ID would be, whether there's a reasonable opportunity for voters without ID to confirm their identity by a signature match or a signature attestation which already exists, or by executing a declaration of identity under penalty of perjury. Moreover, the cost of public education and outreach, a necessary crucial component, is significant. It is costly to ensure that all voters are aware of any new requirements to vote and have access to the free IDs offered by the state. And there's also the cost of free ID themselves. There are a number of estimates um, of the potential cost to North Carolina in imposing a strict ID requirement. And the total burden on taxpayers will, of course, depend on this final version of any bill. But the significant litigation, public education, and material costs in imposing these laws will not be able to be avoided. Brennan Center thanks the committee for this opportunity to speak to you today and applauds the efforts of this committee to enact changes intended to improve North Carolina's elections. However, we urge this body to consider legislation that modernizes North Carolina's voter registration systems rather than to impose a law that will unfairly and unjustifiably restrict access to the polls and potentially leave thousands of North Carolina voters disenfranchised. Our next speaker is Francis DeLuca, who is the president of the John W. Pope Civitas Institute. Uh, Mr. DeLuca, do you want to come up here and speak, or would you prefer to speak from where you're sitting? No, I'll talk from here if I may. Okay, and if you would introduce yourself and who you're representing and a little bit about your organization in your remarks, please. I'd like to thank the chairman and the committee on behalf of the uh, Civitas Institute for inviting me here. I grew up in North Carolina. I first registered to vote in North Carolina when I was 18. I graduated from college, high school, college in North Carolina, so I'm long time familiar with North Carolina. And I have a master's in political science. I don't have a law degree. But I'm here today for three purposes, to discuss the need for a government-issued photo ID for voting, to share polling data on the photo ID, and to talk about the facts surrounding Georgia's experience with government-issued photo ID and its relevance to the debate in North Carolina. Why require a government-issued photo ID? Until recently, North Carolina was primarily a rural state and our election system relied on small precincts with election officials who knew the precinct's voters. We are no longer rural and we no longer vote in our home precincts. In the 2012 general election, over 2.5 million voters out of the 4.5 million voters who voted used one-stop voting sites. These sites, in many cases, are staffed by temporary help, not local precinct of election officials. Voters can use any site anywhere in the county they reside and can register and vote at the same time. The days of poll workers knowing voters ended in 2000 with the start of one-stop voting. With same-day registration starting in 2008, 
one-stop poll workers did not even have a list of voters from which to look at prior to them voting. One-stop voting and the same-day registration combined with the increased urbanization and mobility of the population has rendered obsolete the ability of poll workers to serve as an effective check on voter impersonation and other types of fraud of that sort. We need to update our ballot access and ballot protection just as we up have updated our ability to register to vote and to vote. This is not just a case of voting problems. It is also that the soft safeguards put in place to protect our voter rolls have been mostly stripped away. When the 1995 National Voter Registration Act, also known as Motor Voter, opened up the voter registration process, an important safeguard against fraudulent registrations, the requirement of a verification mailing to the voter's residence address was put in place. This safeguard was rendered null when the State Board of Elections allowed verification mailings to be sent first to P.O. boxes and then to out-of-state addresses. Another safeguard was in the Help America Vote Act, which required new voters to submit either a driver's license number or the last four digits of a Social Security number to be a valid registration. The State Board no longer requires validation of Social Security numbers or driver's license numbers in order to vote and no effort has made to systematically clean up our voter rolls in the, in the meantime. Another complication in our election system is the different classes of voters with differing requirements as to proof of identity. If a voter registers by mail, they must show some sort of ID the first time they vote. But if they register any other way, including voter registration drives, they do not have to show any ID the first time they vote. The deadline to register the vote in North Carolina is 25 days before the election unless you don't register, and then you may register during the 17 days of one-stop voting. Your address must be validated by a verification mailing unless you have already voted, then it doesn't have to be verified. It is counted. This contradiction is law is due mostly to allowing voters to register the same time they vote during one-stop voting, and because registration ends 25 days before an election, not before one-stop voting, there is not time to complete the required verification process. Some advocates for keeping our current system and not adopting a photo ID say our current practice of requiring voters to sign an authorization to vote sheet is sufficient security. This is a hollow suggestion as poll workers do not have access to a signature to compare it to and state election officials have already said local of election officials are not handwriting experts. In changing the law, we have created inequities in how we treat voters depending on how and when they register the vote. It is time that North Carolina begins to treat all voters equally. Requiring a government issue photo ID of all voters prior to casting a vote will mean all voters are treated the same. It will also update our current election system to help protect the integrity of the process. Okay, now I want to present um, some slides about some polling we've recently done and I've made these available to the committee and if anybody else would like any of these slides just contact me afterwards and I'll be happy to provide them to you. Just a quick dates on the polls were conducted. Despite claims of over half a million voters without ID or 600,000, our polling consistently shows 2% or less of registered voters say they lack a government-issued photo ID. Two-thirds of registered voters in our, latest in our last poll supported requiring a photo ID. Elon polls of all adults consistently show support exceeding, and that's of all adults, not just of registered voters, show support exceeding 70%, as do other public opinion polls. North Carolina voters overwhelmingly support strict voting laws, even if it means that some voters have to cast a provisional ballot. By a slim margin, voters do not believe problems with ineligible voters or voter fraud would cause citizens to question an election result, but the overall result is a statistical tie on that one. Clear majorities think having a voter ID requirement would stop voting fraud. By a three to one margin, voters who answered said requiring a photo ID would increase the likelihood of them voting. A photo ID requirement will give voters more confidence in election results. And when asked to describe in their own words what would make elections more secure, 47% of voters volunteered that voter ID would make elections more secure. Oops. The following is a summary of a Georgia PowerPoint presentation, and I would like to thank Georgia Secretary of State Brian Kemp and his staff for their assistance in providing the information on the Georgia ID program. 
This is background information on the Georgia photo ID requirement adopted in 2006. And I want you to note it says no voter is ever turned away from the polls because of an ID. Since 2006, the total number of IDs issued by county election officials is, offices is 29,611. Another 1,155 have been issued by the Georgia Department of Driver Service, Services. This is in a state larger than North Carolina and demographically very similar. And in reality, despite claims, there were not hundreds of thousands of voters or people without IDs. The cost is also another area, cost for voter ID. The total spent since 2006 is 1.7 million. Not a lot of numbers you hear thrown around. It should also be noted, Georgia has 159 counties versus 100 in North Carolina. And I might suggest, if you're looking for the money, the political party checkoff funds might be a good place to start to pay for this. Voter ID education outreach efforts, you can see they did an extensive, within that 1.7, extensive outreach effort, and I particularly like, they used uh, pro football players, and we have plenty of pro athletes in North Carolina that we could reach out to for an education effort. And the demographic analysis of turnout from a pre-ID election to post-ID election, you can see minor voter turnout is up double digits for minority voters. And also in 2012, Georgia had a 72.2% voter turnout while North Carolina was 68.4%. As years have passed, and that's it for the uh, PowerPoints, but as the years have passed, North Carolina has moved away from people voting in their home precincts. It has allowed the state voter rolls to be essentially just a list of names, and we have made numerous changes affecting registration and voting. What we have not done is update ballot and voter protections. While we need to make sure all legal voters are given an unfettered opportunity to exercise their franchise, we must also ensure that those very same voters do not have their votes canceled by illegitimate votes. I would like to close by touching on an immediate benefit of a requiring a photo ID for voting. People who currently lack a photo ID will be brought more fully into daily life. We require an ID for many activities, be it buying cold medicine or cashing a check. Those opposed to requiring the common sense requirement for a government issued photo ID to vote like to talk about voter disenfranchisement. What they never mention is by helping these very same folks get a valid, valid government photo ID, they will be helping them more fully integrate into society. Or is it that they really don't care if they fully participate in life? Is it that they just want them to show up once every couple years to vote and sw slip quietly back into the shadows? Do the right thing for everyone. Pass photo ID. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. Our next speaker is Bob Hall, who is the Executive Director of Democracy North Carolina. Uh, Mr. Hall, you're certainly welcome to come up to the, uh, to the front.